On this episode of China Uncensored, China wants to give you a hug with nuclear arms. Hi, welcome back to China Uncensored. I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Good news, everyone. America in the crosshairs. A new report from the Pentagon says that China is actively developing its fleet of long-range bombers and likely training its pilots for missions over the U.S. And that's not all. This report concludes the People's Liberation Army is developing its nuclear capabilities and focusing on vastly improving already formidable cyber operations. I know this sounds like bad news, but like I said, this is actually good news because the threat from the Chinese military is so serious that CNN and Fox News are actually agreeing on something. This is the Pentagon report they're talking about. Of course, as you can imagine, the Chinese Communist Party is not happy about the report. A foreign ministry spokesperson said, we demand that the U.S. side abandon the Cold War mentality. China's foreign ministry also said, the U.S. report ignores the facts. So, let's take a look at some of the facts from the new Pentagon report. Like that, the People's Liberation Army bombers appear to be training for airstrikes against the U.S. and its allies. And that China's Air Force has been reassigned a nuclear mission. That's significant because the PLA Rocket Force and the PLA Navy already have nuclear-capable delivery systems. So, with the addition of the Air Force, that would give the PLA a nuclear triad across land, sea, and air. Although the report also says that China's long-range bombers with nuclear capability would probably be operational within 10 years. So we've got plenty of time to worry about one that could hit the United States. But the PLA's current nuclear-capable bombers could still be a threat. Here's a video of a nuclear-capable bomber landing on an artificial island the Chinese regime built in the South China Sea. And hey, according to the Asia Maritime Transparency Initiative, that gives China's nuclear-capable bombers a pretty large range. And if they were to land and refuel on some of the other runways they've built in the South China Sea, they could hit northern Australia or the U.S. base in Guam. But the Chinese military is not limiting itself to the South China Sea. The PLA's first overseas military base is in Djibouti. But according to the Pentagon report, China will seek to establish additional military bases in countries such as Pakistan. Well, China has spent hundreds of millions of dollars turning the former sleepy fishing town of Gwadar into a deep sea port. And just a short distance up the coast, China is building a joint naval and air base. So I guess when China's foreign ministry asks where the facts are, that's what I'd tell them. Now, this is not to say that a Chinese airstrike on the U.S. is imminent. It's not. But the Chinese military is advancing quickly, and even if they don't bomb the U.S., there could be, shall we say, closer targets. The Pentagon report says one of the first targets of the Communist Party's military will be Taiwan. And as we've talked about on the show, the Chinese military has a secret plan to invade Taiwan by 2020, which isn't that far away anymore. And since we all know about it, it's not very secret either. What is surprising is how high-tech the Chinese military capabilities are getting. They may not be threatening the U.S. or Taiwan directly with nuclear weapons, and in theory, the Chinese military has a no-first-strike nuclear policy but they are testing nuclear-capable bomber planes, you know, for nuclear deterrence. And they're also taking the battlefield to space. China also continues to develop counter-space capabilities, including kinetic kill missiles, ground-based lasers, and orbiting space robots. Great, deadly space robots in the hands of the world's biggest authoritarian regime. Maybe that's why the Trump administration has been pushing for the Space Force. You know, I never thought I'd be alive to see a space force that's fighting orbiting space robots in space. I mean, other than in a movie. Well, we live in exciting times. So what do you think about the new Pentagon report and China training to target the U.S.? Leave your comments below. And before you go, it's that time when I answer questions from fans who support China Uncensored on the crowdfunding website Patreon. Rakan Wolf asks, question. Now that China has this new hypersonic missile of doom, does this mean we are in deep doo-doo now? Whatever will we do? 
Ah, China's new hypersonic missile. The Pentagon also says the U.S. is falling behind in the hypersonic missile arms race. Of course we need an arms race, it's another cold war. But are we all in deep doo-doo? Not necessarily. The point of hypersonic missiles for the Chinese military is to be able to hit faraway targets, like the U.S., in a short time. But the U.S. doesn't really need hypersonic missiles as badly. The U.S. has military operations in South Korea and Taiwan and the Philippines, so it's much faster for the U.S. to strike China than vice versa. So even with conventional speed missiles, the U.S. is in a good position should it ever come to that, and hopefully it doesn't. The U.S. is also developing hypersonic missiles, by the way. They're just shrouded in secrecy. Thanks for your question. And to everyone else, remember, if you'd like to have me answer your question, join the China Uncensored 50 Cent Army by supporting the show on Patreon. We've been getting demonetized a lot lately, so your support is crucial to the show. There's a link below where you can learn more, or click the orange button on the end screen. Once again, I'm your host, Chris Chappell. Thanks for watching this episode of China Uncensored. Want your question answered? Of course you do. Click this orange button and sign up to support China Uncensored by pledging a dollar or more per episode on the crowdfunding website Patreon. There's a lot of cool perks, and one of them is having me potentially answer your questions at the end of my episodes. Click here to support the show.